of magnetic flux is named the Weber. And then we have the Gauss, and we have a little bit more history. And then we have two long parallel wires, each having a mass per unit length of 40 grams per meter and supported in a horizontal plane by strings that are six centimeters long. When both wires carry the same current I, the wires repel each other so that the angle between the supporting strings is 16 degrees. Right there, okay. Are the currents in the same direction or in opposite directions? What is the current of each wire? Okay, okay, we got this. So, let's see here. Hmm, start by drawing a picture. So the picture we're gonna draw is going to be something like, let's start by drawing something like this. Here's one wire, here's the other wire. Here is the string connecting them. And since we're not really concerned with which direction the uh, current is going, all we're cared about is opposite or, or they're going the opposite direction or in the same direction, we can arbitrarily kind of choose a direction. So for this one, I'm going to say that the current is coming out of the page towards us. Therefore, using the right hand rule, please put your thumb along the direction of the current. Your fingers will indicate the direction of the magnetic field, like so. Specifically, at this point over here, the magnetic field will be going upward. And so that magnetic field is then going to interact with this wire over here. That'll interact with it with this formula. For force equals QE, I think that's Coulomb's law, plus QV cross B. Now, a couple things to note here is... We don't have any electric field, so this portion will go to zero. That should be a vector. We can look at this instead of the charges that are moving are electrons, but current kind of assumes that instead of having negative charges moving in the negative direction, we have positive charges moving in the positive direction. And this can kind of be rewritten along the lines of I L cross B, where L is the length of the wire and I is the current. Basically, you can think of it as taking this uh, velocity in meters per second, taking the per second and then moving it over to the charge, and then charge per second is basically current. I think it's exactly current. Okay. And so for this then, we can use the idea that, so here we have the magnetic field going upward. The magnetic field created by this wire creates a magnetic field going up on this one over here. So if we look at it now from a top-down view, so you have two wires like this. Nope, they're going to be a little bit straighter. Wire, wire. And so magnetic field created by this wire will create a magnetic field going upward, which is represented by out of the board over on this point. And so I'm going to choose a direction of the current. I'm just going to choose up here. So this one would be... Um, down, yep, magnetic. so this one's going down, this one's going up, then L, L is the same direction as current here, L cross B, so L cross B, cross product going outward, this is result in a force going this direction, so that's kind of the theory. If for some reason I got a force going inward, but I got, chose the wrong direction of the current, and I just flip it, but it's the direction I want, so it, we're going to call that good. Um, the other part we need to know about is what's the strength of the magnetic field um, at this point here. That's going to be from the Biot-Savart law. Biot-Savart law is uh, do a line integral over a closed loop. And that will be mu naught i enclosed. This is the enclosed current. Mu naught is a constant. It's the uh, magnetic permeability of free space. So it's like 1.257 times 10 to the negative. Sixth. So, looking at this force here, uh, yep, that's good. All right, so now we're going to look at this in terms of a free body diagram. Specifically, a free body diagram, I'm going to say of that portion right there. So, coming over here, we have a force string going that way. And we can break that down into, I'll use blue. I'm going to call this force string Y because it's force string in the Y direction. This will be force string X because it's the force of the string decomposed into the X direction. Then we'll have force gravity 
And as we talked about over here, we're going to have force magnetic going this way. Now, since everything is in equilibrium, all the forces will equal. Therefore, we can set them equal to each other. Yeah, not really equal. They're opposite. So we're going to say same uh, equal magnitudes. Let's do gray. So we'll start with the y-axis, y-direction. So then we have force string y, which when we look at this, we know what this angle is right here. That's going to be 8 degrees because it's 16, I think, 16 degrees total. So the midpoint will be 8. So if we want this y component over here, that'll be force string times sine, no, cosine cosine of theta, which will be mass times gravity. We'll equal this part right there. Um, since, but since we're given a linear density, 40 grams per meter, the total mass will be the length of our total wire times uh, the linear density, density based on length as opposed to volume, times gravity. So we got this equation, we got that equation. Good, good. Now, Let's look at the y direction. Ooh, baby blue, maybe cyan, not entirely sure. So x dimension, axis. So f s x equals force of the string times sine of theta. Look over here. So we want this section right here, have theta up there, so that's going to be sine theta. So katoa, if you will. And this will equal I L B. I know there's a cross product there, but Cross product is a measure of how perpendicular things are. And in this case, the current is going to be perpendicular to the magnetic field. So the measure of perpendicular, perpendicularity, normality, will be 100%, which will be 1. And then um, I didn't so tell you how to solve this, but if you have an infinite line, the magnetic field is going to be mu naught i over 2 pi r. The uh, length of the closed loop will be 2 pi r. It's a circle. So we're going to have, oh, I think I'll solve for r here too. We're given that um, that's 6 centimeters. So this length right here is 6 centimeters. So that length right there will be 6 centimeters times sine of theta. That's only half because we've got another half over there. So we do 2 times 6 times 10 mega second because convert to meters times sine of theta. So we basically have 12 sine of theta as r. So I'll do this as mu naught i over 12 times 2 pi times 10 to the negative second times sine of theta. There we go. Uh, these, this i and this i is the same, even though one is capital and one is lowercase. Just an inconsistency on my part. And so when we combine all this, we're going to say I squared mu naught over 24, that seems 24, 24 pi times 10 to the negative second times sine of theta. Nope, sine of theta is going to be on the bottom. There we go. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, continuing on, we now have two equations, two unknowns. We have this and that, and then we have these two that I underlined there. What I'm going to do is solve for f of s in both occasions, force of string, and then set them equal to each other. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to start by this one. I'm going to say length, I, oh, I forgot the L up here, times L. Yes. Yep. Um, sorry, focus, focus. For the top one, uh, length of the wires times linear density times gravity all over cosine of theta equals, now I solve this one, I squared mu naught times L over 24 pi times 10 to the negative second times sine of theta, and that'll be squared because I'm going to move that sine over there. And then that equals for string. So now we have this equation right here. We're solving for I squared. And to do that, we do orange. I don't like orange. A darker blue, semi-dark blue. Okay, so L's will cancel. Click, clack. I squared equals 
Uh, we have a lamb, uh, linear charge, or linear density times gravity times 24 pi times 10 to the negative second. And I'm going to do times tangent of theta because we have sine over cosine. But then we have one sine left over, so we have sine theta. All over, feels like there should be something else down here. Ah, we'll do mu naught on the bottom. Does that seem reasonable? That does seem reasonable. Maybe it is. Yeah. Oh, yep. Because the L's canceled. I, L, B. B was mu naught. I, yep, over 2 pi r, yeah, seems reasonable enough. We'll see, we'll just kind of go with this, see what happens. So doing some more, putting in some more numbers. So lambda is, I think it was 40 grams per um, meter. So we'll convert grams to kilograms, just to be SI. Make everything consistent. 9.8 for gravity. 24, well, it's, it's still 24. We have a pi, we have a 10 to the negative second. We have a tangent of theta. We have a sine of theta. Ah, that's how I got rid of the, there's also a cosine at the bottom, but I got rid of it with a tangent. And then 1.2257 times 10 to the negative six. Yep, get another good color for canceling. This will become 10 to the negative fifth. That'll cancel, give us 10 to the negative one. That'll go to the top, which will be 10. I think that's all I need. I think that's good, okay. So now we'll do calculator, calculator, on. Okay, clear, make sure we're in degrees. Click, click, clack, enter, second quit. Do 40 times 9.8 times 24 times pi, which is 3.1415 times tangent of eight, times sine of eight, times 10, divided by 1.257, and that gives us 45.98, that's I squared, so we'll square root this, second square root, second answer, and we get 67.8. I equals 67.8, amps. Okay, recap what we did real quick, just so we don't get too lost if we ever have to do this problem again. The idea here was we had two wires with opposing currents, and they created magnetic fields. Those magnetic fields then interacted on the current in their adjacent wire. That created a magnetic uh, field where we, just, where we determined the magnitude of that based on the Biot-Savart law which we then adapted to an infinite line. We assumed these were pseudo-infinite. Um, that gave us the magnetic field. The amount of how that magnetic field interacted with the current, we then used force equals QV cross B, which we then write as F equals IL cross B because we viewed the electrons moving as, or the current we view as positive charges moving in a positive direction. We then also balanced out the force of the string with the weight, mass times gravity, which we had to then use a linear density and the length of the wire overall canceled out. Then we had a whole bunch of math, did some simplification, put in a calculator, and success. Well, hopefully success. I believe we succeeded. I feel successful. So that's how I approach this problem. Hope it helped you. See you next time.